Hey there, I'm Ryan with Storyblocks, and in today's tutorial, A Beginner's Guide to Advanced Tools and Techniques, Part 2 of 4, we're going to take a quick look at camera tracking, which will allow us to generate a 3D camera inside your imported footage. So, let's get started. Before we jump into the actual tutorial, I just want to show you a few examples of, uh, you know, quick motion tracking, um, camera tracking uh, ideas. This is just spending a little bit of time on these, just so you get the idea of what we're going to do today. And there you have it. All right, so those are just some ideas, so, um, just to show you what you can do. Um, so if you downloaded uh, the files for this tutorial, you'll have everything you need to perform a run through with me today. Um, first, you're going to have three files, a footage file, light leaks, and a Storyblocks logo. Um, the first thing you want to do is take this footage file. You can see it's 25 frames per second. Um, it's about 30 seconds long, which is a little long to analyze footage. It's going to take a long time. So let's just make a new composition. We'll call this main clip. It's seven seconds long, 25 frames per second. And we'll go ahead and make that comp. You want to drag in your footage file. And you'll see it's only seven seconds here. And that's all we need to do for the time being. So we're going to go ahead and close that out. Now we're going to make a new comp. You can still keep seven seconds. This will be our camera tracking. So now with this comp open, we want to grab our main clip and drag it in. Then you're going to go to effects and presets and you're going to type in camera and you should see it under perspective. You want to drag it out and drop it onto your footage. Now it's going to analyze and I'll see you in just a second. Okay, now the camera is solving. It's basically going to generate a ton of little key points, tracking marks, and here we are. So now your scene has generated all these motion tracking points for your camera as it moves through this scene. So all you're gonna to wanna to do is find one. If we wanna place our logo in this area, um, you can just right click on this point. Maybe we'll try the, uh, the log here. You just right click, hit create null and camera. Now what I like to do is go to the null object and hit S for scale so we can see where it is. There it is there. So then you want to go back to your project panel and you want to grab your logo, drag that in and drop it. We're going to go ahead and toggle over and create this as a three dimensional layer, which will be right here. So you might not see it. So what you want to do is go to your null object layer again and hit P for position, click on position, copy these points, command C or control C, go to your logo, hit P for position, click on position and then paste. Now you can see the logos here, but it's kind of small. So you just want to hit scale again, which is S. You want to scale up your logo to the size that you want. And now you can actually move it into position because it's locked to the null object. This null object is basically a point that's going to stay in this scene exactly where it had generated these key points for. So the camera will actually move through the scene, leaving the null object alone, and it will just stay positioned where it was. So now, if you want to pan through, you can see it's going to stay right there with that log, which is what we wanted. I'm going to drop down to about half rate. And we'll go ahead and render this and let's see what it looks like. So you can see it's right there with the log, just like it was in the scene to begin with. I know it doesn't look perfect. It's a logo inside a scene and that's fine because what we're trying to do right now if you wanted to spend hours on this, you could really go in with some lighting effects and color corrections and really get that to really feel like it's sitting right there on that embankment. But for now, I think that's a good job. So the next thing you can do to try to make this scene a little bit more lively is you can add light leaks, which were part of the demo folder. So here I always like to just toggle this over and we'll do screen and maybe about 55%. Now when you render it, you should have some light leaks that are actually coming through and really enhancing the scene. And it, as long as your leaks are over your logo, it will kind of affect the logo as well. And just kind of give it a little variation and make it seem like it's a little bit more realistic. So. I'm going to let 
this render out a little bit more. There we go. Now let's watch it. There you go. Seems a little bit more realistic now. So the next thing you can do, <clears throat> once this is done rendering, okay. So now what we can do is toggle this back over. If you click on your logo, you can make it have motion blur. We just need to turn motion blur on. And this, when it renders, will just allow it to kind of have a little bit of a more fuzzier effect once it gets closer to the camera and kind of blur away. So that's a quick guide to the basics of camera tracking. Um, stay tuned for part three, where we will discuss 3D space, setting up cameras, and lighting your scene. I'm Ryan with Storyblocks. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you later.